come to Jamaica, the island of real bad man. Some real dog at you throw some real gang bang. No run for the fair, the knock your bitch man. Stop up! These are the moments when everybody gonna load it. We not instigate violence But we believe in the self-defense No matter what These are the moments When every gangsta gun loaded We not instigate violence But we believe in the self-defense In Jamaica's relentless war and crime The worst criminals End up on the true island story platform These are their stories Welcome to True Island Stories. I'm here again today with a lovely lady. Um, her name is Miss Anna Maria. And I'm going to do this interview in two parts. Um, first, I'm going to elaborate on uh, Miss Tanya Stevens' interview and my thoughts. Because people have been, you know, DMing me, you know. Why well, hear my thoughts, my version on the whole ordeal? You know, I chose to stay silent because there's a time to speak and a time to stay quiet. And I needed some other female's perspective on the matter because I can't speak alone from a male's perspective. I have to speak from also other victims' perspective because this is a very delicate matter. You understand me and you have to bear in mind also in the court of law every man is innocent until proven guilty however in the court of public opinion it's a whole different matter and in the jamaican vernacular there's a saying tom junk but tom no fool and she gave out hints pointed fingers right to a certain location but still we can't say directly at all but as we may say Tom Junk but Tom no fool and another lady have you know come to the forefront and call out which is Stevens and she had stated she had reported the matter but she never called him name and he came out and denied, and she's saying he's out of guilt. Now she has come out directly and call him name. And one would ask, what would she have to gain from doing that? Because for somebody come out and ball rape, you know, it's a serious torture that them put themselves through, you know, and a serious stigmatization, a lifelong stigmatization. You understand? And then them say, when more than one person tell us you're drunk, you know, don't drive, go home. And I have coined a phrase saying, sometimes, you know, in Tanya's and uh, Miss Ling's perspective, they have found their own way of dealing with it. And sometimes one has to be their own light in their moment of darkness and despair. And the person that can conquer his or her emotions, that's the person that can conquer the world. And Miss Tanya Stevens has been able to conquer her emotions in light of what happened to her with regards to her brutal ordeal that happened over three decades ago with someone whom she trusted dearly. And that someone betrayed her innocence at only the tender age of 17 years old by ravaging her coveted particulars without her permission. And it didn't happen once. He ravaged her repeatedly for hours, according to her. And he beat her to the point where she couldn't fight back because of uh, their immeasurable size difference. She was all about a frail, uh, 100 pound female at the time. And him, a chiseled, well-oiled machine. That was a losing battle on her part from the starter released the gate. And then what did he do? He calmly took her to the shower and bathed her gently as if, as if nothing had transpired. He washed all the evidence from her, all the seminal fluids and hair particles gone, flushed, 
But some would ask, out of curiosity, mind you, and I'm sure this would be his adjudicator's defense. So if he beats you so agonizingly, then where are the marks, Your Honor? Shouldn't the plaintiff have visible marks on her person if what she's accusing my client of is true? Then where are they? Let her stand and show the court in attendance marked Exhibit B all the marks on her frail stature. I put it to you, Your Honor. She's lying to the judiciary and my client is innocent and demand to be released on a writ of habeas corpus and I will be filing a compensatory suit against the plaintiff in loot of personal and punitive damage and I demand a public apology in restoration of my client's integrity. And blah, blah, blah and all of the above. Now, bathe after the act. The defendant knew exactly what he was doing. He's a professional. He's a serial scrapist. And whosoever does not see it that way, I only pray to God that he does not come in contact with one of your family members. And if they ever do, I urge them to run. Whenever this individual is outed by Tanya, because we still cannot say with definitive certainty who the perpetrator is, but we would love for her to do so forthwith, so as to co-authorize any further occurrences to any other female in his crosshairs. And he's tried and punished to the full extent of the law. Tanya was not sexually assaulted once, but twice, according to her. And she further stated that a friend, her age, a male friend whom she knew, from she knew herself as a thought took advantage of her when she revealed her ghastly ordeal to him. And instead of consoling her, he saw an opportunity to dog pile on the rabbit. Thus, he invited her over to his house. But she wasn't the only invitee. Oh, there were others who were there for only one intent and purpose. Unsanctioned vagina. They came, they saw, and they took without her permission and she said the only thing she sought comfort in was the fact that one of them had a microscopic penis she felt neither its entrance nor its exit so in the grand scheme of things he counted for naught in her tumultuous ordeal she was subjected to endure by the werewolves who sexually assaulted her on the day she had to find some method to cope with their madness they ran a train on her, battery in raw Jamaican terminology. And get this, the main perpetrator whose house it was, the one who she trusted, his dad was a cop. And in her deposition, she stated she feared disclosure because of two main things. One, the last time she heard a woman went to the station or some station, they assaulted her sexually. Two, she overheard a judge telling his daughter that if Ever they should get raped, speak of it to no one. Come to him, because the system would let them relive the entire ordeal over and over again. They would drag them through the system. Mind you, Tanya was only 19 years old at the time that happened. 17 when the first one occurred with Captain Chisel. Let's call him Captain Chisel. She was only but a juvenile whose frontal lobe was still underdeveloped. And she had to develop her own coping mechanism. And she chose silence. She did not divulge any information to her family, her mom either, because she went on to state that they were very judgmental and they opposed her going to the studios in the first place. So at the bottom end of the spectrum, she feared getting blamed for her being assaulted. How trivial is that? Hmm? How trivial is that? But you know them long time parents say brother. Remember one time parents in our Jamaican parents, them they used to tell us I love you. How much our parents, honestly, used to hug you and tell us I love you. The most them do when they go to school, you know. Give a little lunch when they put Vaseline on your face, you know. Hmm? And put ear on your ear you know, until you go on to school, you know. All I mean I tell? Them they know if you tell you I love you. And we know if you tell our kids and you know, Change the narrative there. Change the whole culture there. Leave in the comment section if I like me I tell. Don't be ashamed of it, man. No, no, that's true. Our parents back then, they don't know compassion. They love, but they love without compassion. Most of our foreigners come know if you say, Oh, I love you. 
I how much on the right now. When I end up on the phone and say, I love you, Dad, I love you, ma'am. Something in the ear back when you feel awake, because you just know say a sort of thing said. I like me I tell. Mm-hmm. Tell you, so I thought the things I mean, hate me, I love it. And the dog gonna speak, the guru gonna speak. Another thing that Tanya brought up that conjured her silence was another girl in her community who also fell victim to illegal bodying. She was chastised by the entire community to the point where she had to relocate. One moment she was there and another minute she wasn't. Since her last interview, several persons have drawn their own conclusion about her still not hawking, spitting, <coughs> spitting out the consumptuous name that lay dormant on her esophagus for so many years. Some said she's not setting good examples for their kids by staying silent because she, Tanya, is a model figure. And if she chose that way, then maybe, just maybe, to them, that's the correct thing to do. Others chimed in after she posted on her IG page after, after her, some would say, provocative interview. And I'm sure the scraper himself was watching from his dark and moldy lair. And he would say provocative. <laughs> And I will tell you why later on. She stated that some vloggers aren't genuine. Them just want something for run with figure viral. They aren't genuinely concerned about her physical or her mental well-being. And I'm sure that's the case with some. But I can assure you, not with all. For instance, myself, the guru. Mm -mm. Because I have a litany of other topics I could be elaborating on. But as I said... Bad people get away with doing bad things and good people fold their arms and do nothing. And my stance is, I must do something instead of saying something must be done. I will repeat, I must do something instead of saying something must be done. And if we practiced that as a nation, we would get so much further ahead in the betterment of our society. Because I have daughters, sisters, aunts, and a mother. So it's only right for me to do the right. I did not want to come out and say anything without gathering intel from other females' perspectives on the matter. Other victims' perspective. So I'm truly delighted to share my platform today with a beautiful lady, Miss Anna Maria from Bridgeport, Connecticut. And to have dialogue on this such a touching and delicate matter, which I will bring to you in part two of this here little shindig. We've come to the end of, I don't even know what to name this. I don't even know what to caption it. I don't even know what to caption it because it's so atrocious. I don't even know what to caption it. But part two is coming right after this because I don't want this to be long. So... It'll come, people. It's coming. And you'll enjoy, trust me. So, bless upon yourself. And I was supposed to post the link of the trial and history, but some of the video not ready yet, and it's not me alone. I work on it, so. You don't know a sort of thing, but it's soon ready, man. The nostalgic, you know, aspect of trial and is me. Yeah, we extend the thing. I remember the darker side of paradise, the bio. Support the thing. Patreon squad, much love, you know. You understand me? Yeah, man. From the guru. I remember, merch upon the perch, you know, support the thing. As we say, we have some new items that come, some words of wisdom and some, you know, words of encouragement and some Christian. You see me, I say, yeah, man, things from Christian people, them car. Everybody listen to the channel and they request it so we have to deliver. We are here to please. All right? So, bless upon yourself. Next part will come up soon. All right? Just decide to split it, guy. It kind of too long. But if you choose to pick up the gun or the knife, then there's a chance you might end up in Chew Island stories. What will you choose? Uh... Why, yes, them so coming out the one out the whole grill in the man. Hey. I hear you, with me. Question: What will you choose? Let go the gun and come and TIS news. What will you choose? Cry peace all day in the field. What will you choose? Let go the gun and come and CVM news. What will you choose? 
clues, clues, clues Don't see, that with the touch Nighttime, them run out fully dark Guns on one nada, everything a sparks But who are the piranha, which one are the shark? Moon the black are rims, but the cat same soft And I estimate the pass and then get them head back Screamers and white dream and them a war Whole place fuck up from them gone with the boss Scare them bridge dream and rock man dark Whole place someone from them like a playboy When the man drop and who get the joy? Panty eyes, you turn star, but what will you choose? Let God go to come panty eyes, no, so what will you choose? Cry peace or dead in the field, what will you choose? Let God go to come and see the end news, so what will you choose? Cry peace or dead in the field, what will you choose? What will you choose? Oh? Choose Charlie wa black down rock foot Mikey Pelp, dead in our boat No no drop but him badness a good Jet Lee, make enough man fail for God Chubby Jed and Pogo out of salt Not the mark than you and enough man in mud Junglis them we kill you then go burn down your house CLA not entertain in a thump na no mouth well, You do the crime then, you do the time Can't escape, you can't blur the line I choose the fifth and tear off the same And you can't mix up dukes man with up a film Marcel put more loan assassin One more shot to the court by the bing Rock court rise the four and the god that I sing What will you choose? Let God go to come and TIS news What will you choose? Cry peace or dead in the field What will you choose? Let God go to come and see VM news What will you 